right, one for the money, two for the go, right? We missed it. Look at that. How many times that happened on the first, second try? Oh, we ground a little on the frame. We might be stuck here. We might have to start all over. A couple days ago, I was cleaning out my great-grandfather's milking barn. Found myself a gem and a treasure. I live up here in northern Utah. We're country folks, so you'll never know what you find in an old barn. But I found a treasure, and I want you to see it. Come with me. As a child, I grew up playing in this barn. It was my great-grandfather's milking barn. My grandfather has now passed, and quite frankly, I haven't been to the property in about 20 years. And in that 20 year span, grandpa became a hoarder. So we've been cleaning out the barn with a goal of trying to get this as a preserved historical landmark. God. You know, it's funny, my grandpa built this 120 years ago, my great grandfather. He'd run his dairy cows in here on that side and have to put down all the feed and the grain right here to get those cows to stay still. They'd put their heads through and sit there you know, you look at this worn wood and, you know, how many cattle did my great-grandfather and grandfather run through here providing dairy, getting the milk for it actually supported my entire family for many, many years. You know, they always talk about what stories they could tell. And, you know, I can tell a lot of stories about this building, this barn. And I remember as a kid coming up here on top and we'd play in all the hay. So we'd bring the hay in on the hay trolley and there in the middle and kick it over here. And when it came time to feed, we'd pitch it down off and feed the cattle. You know, it was a simpler time. It was a time when we uh, had to appreciate everything we had. It wasn't just easy peasy. It wasn't everything on the internet. It was, this was life. I mean, you had to be out here twice a day milking, taking care of those animals, because if you didn't, you weren't going to eat. You know, barns are cool and all, but I'm not a barn guy. I'm a motorcycle guy. That's why I've got you here, actually. We brought the whole crew here because I had to show you what we found on the other side of the barn. Now, I spent my childhood playing in this barn. This didn't exist when I was a kid. You know, we got cleaning everything out because Grandpa was a hoarder, but I found one thing that it's a treasure. So we brought you along, and I have to show you what we found we found our very own barnyard bike. Check this bike out. What we've got here is a 1988 Softail Custom. In 1984, Harley-Davidson realized they had to make a change from the hardtails. The hardtails have been wildly successful. Unfortunately, it was beating all of us riders up. That is where the soft tail was born. A motorcycle with dual shocks underneath to give you a little more cushion as you ride down the road. What excites me the most about Harley-Davidson's, and especially this 88 soft tail, is it looks like no one's ever messed with it. It's all stock, all original, giving us a great opportunity to customize it and really develop it and make it whatever we want it to be. We don't know how long this bike's been parked. I have no clue what the motor looks like. Don't know what the fuel, don't know what the oil is like. We're gonna break it down. We're gonna bring this bike back to life. Hey, I got my work cut out for me, but we're gonna get it done. That was my grandfather's. I'm gonna put it back on the road.
So before I actually move this motorcycle and put it on a trailer, I'm gonna do some homework. I wanna know exactly the ins and outs of this motorcycle. I do work in the motorcycle industry, but I'm not a builder, I'm not a mechanic. I'm just a normal motorcycle rider. Been riding for years, but I wanna know the ins and outs of this motorcycle before I tear it down, before I move it, and quite frankly, before I rebuild it and customize it to make it my own. I'm back at the barn. It's time to get this bike out of here. We cleaned everything out and I am ready to tackle this, what I hope to be a motorcycle. God, this is disgusting. Man, I hit the jackpot here. Thank you, Grandpa. I just wish you wouldn't have stashed it in here. Woo! Man, it looks like it hasn't been touched. I mean, that seat looks original. It doesn't look ripped or torn. Now get this crap out of here. Look at that. 22,000 miles on it. I mean, it looks like we had a bunch of birds living in it for who knows how long. I don't even dare open those saddlebags. It's probably full of rats and mice nests. Man, I mean, the pipes are blued. I mean, clearly, Grandpa put some miles on this bike. I mean, the odometer says 22,000. I bet this oil is disgusting. Oh yeah, that's some sludgy oil there. Ugh. This is gonna be some work, but I really think we've got something on our hands here. I think this is gonna be worth it. Look at the old school bars. I mean, they don't do this anymore. I mean, tight and right. The tires look all right for being sitting here. I mean, that might be because the barn protected it. Man, we've got to get this out of here. I am so excited. All right, let's get this bike out of here. So I worked it out with the family and the motorcycle's mine. Nobody else wants it. There's no interest in it. So now I've got to figure out a way, you know, first and foremost, I'm a country boy, so I don't have a trailer to load it. Every time I've ridden a motorcycle, I've ridden a motorcycle. I don't trailer my motorcycle. So gonna have to get the truck, gonna have to borrow a trailer get back out there and roll it out and take it over to my place. So my place is Jack Wagon Ranch. Uh, my grandfather always called this a Jack Wagon, so it always stuck with me. So when I bought my own little piece of land, I called it Jack Wagon Ranch. So we're gonna take that bike over to Jack Wagon Ranch and start tearing into it. Welcome to daylight. Probably been 30 years since you've seen that. Well, maybe. Oh, I gotta see this in the sun. This thing has not seen the light of day. I can't even believe that side stand holds this bike up. Is it gonna stay? You know, it feels like it's not gonna go anywhere. Look at that. There it is. So we've got the bike loaded on the trailer. Hopefully it's the last time that bike's ever on a trailer, if I can have it my way. And we're headed over to my place. So at my house, I've got a small little wood shop. We've cleared it out. I'm gonna roll this bike in there, get it up on the lift and get doing some work to it. I knew there was no way we could work on it there in the barn where we found it. I mean, I love grandpa and I love his barn, but ultimately there's no way that we can keep that bike clean and keep junk and gunk out of the motor, even though there's probably already junk and gunk in that motor. So we're gonna take it over to my place, get it unloaded, put it on the lift. I'm gonna have to get some help. Uh, I know this is gonna be a daunting task. I'm gonna level with you. I've never built a motorcycle before. I've changed my own oil, I've changed belts. You know, I've done the basic stuff that we've all done, but when it comes to something as thorough as building out and bringing this bike back to life, 
I've never done that. So gonna have to call in some favors and some friends, see if we can get some help. I know one or two people that I think might be able to join me, might be able to coach me, might be able to advise me on what exactly to do so that I'm not the guy known for destroying a beautiful piece of machinery all because I was ignorant and didn't know what to do. Putting this motorcycle on this trailer was harder than I thought. This bike's over 30 years old. Of course, we know it's shot, it's been dilapidated, it hasn't been taken care of, and it was very tight in the steering. So I think that we've missed some grease there in the bars. So it, it was hard to maneuver, hard to get it up there. It's not the heaviest motorcycle that Harley's ever produced, but when you're pushing it without air in a tire, up a ramp and then down a ramp and then back up a ramp, it does get very heavy as you do it. this into the shop here and see if, quite frankly, if it's even gonna fit. All right, one for the money, two for the go, right? We missed it. Look at that, how many times that happened on the first, second try? As I was rolling this into my barn, of course, the concrete floor I have is too high for a motorcycle without any air in the tires. Threw down some two by fours, trying to do it country boy style, ramp it up, and of course, we got hung up on the underframe. We might be stuck here. We might have to start all over. If 20 years part doesn't do the damage, Bring it in for repair, sure will. Woo, we can. So the frame caught the concrete, had to roll it back down, had to give it the good old country boy effort and pushed it all the way up and in. Now we've got it in there, but my barn's not big. Uh, the place I've got that I'm building this is an old wood shop and it's very narrow. So had to take it at a funky angle to get it on a lift, finally get it strapped down on a lift and then had to spin and turn the lift so we could actually get around this motorcycle to work on it. There's some real potential here as I'm sweating. Well, we got it in the shop now. I guess the next step is uh, get it on the lift and start to assess it. Yeah, I'm gonna need some help for sure. So I've told a couple friends of mine about this motorcycle and what I found, and they're really excited. And I'm gonna ask them for some help and some guidance. Uh, one friend in particular, he's been riding motorcycles for the majority of his life. He actually worked at a Harley Davidson dealership, so the guy knows the ins and outs of motorcycles. I'm gonna spend some time, gonna go meet up with him, have a conversation, and maybe pick his brain on what is the right path, what is the right procedures to take to take an old bike that's been long since forgotten and breathe the life back into it. Bill, Lionel, what's going on, man? How are you, man? Good, it's good to see you. Great place to come to. Hey, how do you pass up some ice cream? I'm telling you. Let's go get some, though. I'm All not right. gonna stand here, it's too hot. I'm I want telling ice cream. you, it's pretty warm out there on a black bike. You bought pistachio. I buy you ice cream and you buy a crappy flavor like that. Oh, never. Mint's where it's at. <laughs> Thought you'd know by now.
I don't care what Mitch says. You ride a motorcycle, you eat ice cream. There's nothing better. Better than the beer, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> well, I can get on and ride later. Yeah, exactly. So, Bill, you bought a new house, man. How's the new house? Dude, I wish I was there long enough to enjoy it, but man, I've been doing a lot of traveling lately, so it's getting there, though. A lot of work, you know, a lot of little things that you gotta fix, but we're enjoying it. Good. It's a good house. All right, so Bill, here's the reason why I brought you to get some ice cream. Not only is the ice cream good, but I have found a motorcycle in my great-grandfather's barn. I've tore it out, I've assessed kind of what it is, and it's a 1988 Softail. And I wanna get this bike back on the road. Now, I know your history in Harley-Davidson, and quite frankly, you've got a history that I don't have. So I'm coming with a bribe of crappy pistachio ice cream to get you to help me in figuring out where to take this bike, what to do with it, and how do I get it back on the road. I think it's gonna cost you more than one ice cream cone, buddy. <laughs> that was it a double like scoop. A, it sounds like a big, big project. You know, the one thing that kind of appeals to me is, one, is that you're gonna finally get a bike back out on the road. Yeah. It's been a little bit. But the second is, in our industry, and what we do, talking to all of these people, uh, shop owners and everything else, why don't we reach out to some of the ones that we've got our best relationships with and ask them to help us out, get some of their input. I mean, they, a lot of them deal with the older stuff. You know, I've, my bike's a little bit newer. I know a little bit more on that one than I do some of the older bikes, but man, if we could get, you know, so like kind of X, like a mentorship. A mentorship, exactly. Get them get to teach ideas. and coach me on what to do, because they, they know better than anybody. Not only that, but they're gonna know all the tricks of the trade. They're gonna know the shortcuts to get things done properly. You know, if we need to hide wires down through the frame, if we need to raise the tank, lower the tank, all the way to the suspension and even bars or wheels and tires on it. Because, you know, back in those days, there wasn't the technology and the wheels and tires as of now. That's a basic. night day difference. It was all basic. Yeah. It was like literally moving parts, that's all. We Computer wanna, systems you out. You want to build I mean, something that you can jump on with your wife and go cruise around these country roads whenever you wanted to. You know, that's a cool part because I'm excited because it, I don't have that knowledge, but is it, you're right, in 88, there's minimal electronics. Very, very simple, very basic, enough that I could probably crash course through, but if you're right, if I can get a mentorship, I can get somebody to step in and help me out, and who already knows the woes who's already made the mistake, so I don't exactly. have to make those mistakes. And maybe give us enough power out of that little 88 that if you're riding two up, up through some of these steep hills and canyons, that you've got plenty of power in that. Yeah. See, this is well worth the ice cream. Maybe take it out, put a six-speed transmission in it. Yeah, see, uh -huh. now we're talking. Maybe the air suspension or some well, kind of suspension. because you've got air on your bike. I've got air on my bike. And the thing I love the most about the air suspension is when I load the tour pack on there and I load my wife on there and we're gonna go on a longer trip, I can adjust that bike to where it's in the sweet spot driving down the freeway. But when I want to be low and cool, I can drop the air out of it and cruise around town. Low and cool. He's low saying. and cool. <laughs> so while having ice cream with Bill, he provided me a great idea. And that was I should use the people I know in the motorcycle industry to lead and guide me, to mentor me on how to build this motorcycle. I know how to ride a motorcycle, I know basic maintenance, but I don't know building. I don't know the internal workings of the motor per se. I don't know exactly the gears in the transmission. So Bill made a suggestion that I ought to make some phone calls, reach out to the industry, people that I know, some of the experts, some of these master builders, and ask them for their opinion. All right, man, you said I could take it for a ride, and listen, I don't say no, and when you offer, I'm going. Awesome, bring her back full. Yeah, always. Quick air up. Oh, look at you, fancy. So adjust it, play with it. Give you an idea for your bike. All right. You enjoy yourself. I'll be See back you shortly. Few. You might want more ice cream. As I ride around Ogden, I can't help but think about the most important thing of this barnyard bike is the ride. Aesthetically, it could be great, it can look cool, cool paint, cool parts, but it's got to ride. I've got to be able to put miles down on this bike, it's got to be an enjoyable ride.
So as I ride, my mind is drawn to the ride. How do I make this ride my ride?